Hello and welcome to TPM's 4-Minute Friday. Today we're going to take a look at uh, well, a little bit older command. Uh, it's been around for quite a while, but uh, as oftentimes with these videos, I had a phone call or two in the last week or two and saw that uh, some people are not aware of this. So I figured I'd throw a little video out here to show you the, the command called Guide Grid. And this allows us to take our views and have them consistently spaced, or located rather, and spaced on our title blocks. Uh, we've got quite a few people not aware of that as I review project templates and so on and so forth. This needs to certainly be something that's predefined in a project template. So let's go ahead and slide on over to Revit and we'll take a look at how we use the guide grid. So you see here we are inside of Revit. Got a simple plan here, first floor, second floor, nothing unusual. And if we go ahead and jump towards the uh, title blocks, you'll see we've already dropped these in place uh, for both the uh, first and second floor. And you'll see as I jump between both of them, as best as we try, it's almost impossible to get them exactly located uh, with, without having some type of line work already in place to uh, help uh, place these. So the guide grid allows us to, uh, uh, to work with this. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this view. And you'll see that we can place guide grids into our project. And we do that under our view commands up top here. So under view, you see we have our guide grid command right here. Within that, uh, we define one. We actually give it a name, so I prefer to use a descriptive name, you know, two-inch grid. And there it shows me a grid. Now, by default, it's going to come in with a one-inch grid. So one of the first things I usually want to do is go ahead and select this grid as an object. And because I've named it two inches, I want to change this variable. I want the actual spacing to be a two-inch. So you can effectively think of this as, you know, like graph paper. The other thing we might want to do is go ahead and move this so that at least one of these corners is placed here. Unfortunately, you cannot uh, align or snap to the edges of these, so we are going to be putting these as best we can, which I know is a little bit bothersome for some people, but it is consistent from sheet to sheet. So that's one of the advantages of this. You'll see that as we place this, we're effectively placing it uh, for all sheets. So any future sheets will have the exact same location for all these guide grids. So if I go to my sheet 102, the grid's not there. It's actually there, it's just simply not turned on. Since we have it defined in the properties box over here, yes, we have a guide grid and it's currently set to none. So if I turn on that two inch grid, the exact same location is now uh, applicable to both um, sizes, you know, to both sheets rather. As a result, I can now go in and say, well, if this is one of my views here, I'm going to pick on a view and now I can use the move command to move the view onto one of these grids. Now here's the uh, thing you gotta be aware of though. Using the guide grid like this and using the move uh, command with your views, you can only snap to grid elements, column grids, or if I was in an elevation view, I could snap to a level line as well. Uh, notice that I cannot snap to a wall. So I'm gonna pack, uh, snap to the intersection of A1 and go ahead and snap to the intersection of this grid here. So I'm just gonna zoom in so we can see it a little bit easier. And there we go. And I can do the same thing. So if I go into sheet A101, bring in our first floor, same thing happens. Zoom in just so we can see this. Pick the view. Use the move from here to that one, which is the two down and three over. Uh, you might be thinking, well, the grid's kind of up, uh, in intrusive. We don't want to see that. Well, again, you can hold down the shift or the control key and pick all of your sheets at one time and then specify whether you want grids to be even vi be visible or not. So I'm going to go ahead and say none. So now if we zoom to fit this sh sheet and this sheet, you'll see now as we flip back and forth, the views are placed at the same location on each sheet. And of course, that helps out when we're checking the sheets on, and when they're actually plotted, when contractors or subs are out in the field, uh, we don't have to worry about um, you know moving that view or moving our eyes when we're flipping between sheets. So it allows us to consistently space this. And of course, you can have multiple grids defined, maybe have a grid size that you want for your floor plans, another grid size for some of your uh, uh, you know elevation views. Uh, you could use the guide grid for your details on the sheet. However, since there's no grids, typically there's no grids on your 2D drafting. Uh, there's not going to be any. There might be some on some of your enlarged views or sections. You could have a, a grid there. But at the very least, you will be able to visually move and adjust the, uh, the, grid, the details into the grid if you wanted a larger, say, 4x or 6x6 six six grid. 
to help with that. Uh, so there you go. That's the uh, the view command, or sorry, the guide grid to be used in the uh, title block views. Uh, if we have enough interest in the comments, I might uh, show another technique where some people have gone to uh, the, the process of adding lines in a title block and then set up parameters so that you can move those uh, lines around in the title block as needed per sheet. Um, you still are only going to be able to snap to the grids and levels in the views themselves, but it might give you some flexibility you need or might want if you're wanting to have different heights, uh, heights for verticals or horizontals. The other way of doing that would be to have two or three or multiple guide grids, uh, one at four inch spacing, another one at two inches, and then you can kind of bounce between the two of them between going horizontal or vertical if you needed to work with it that way as well. So anyway, there you go. That's the guide grid, it allows you to easily uh, uh, consistently place views on the sheets, and hopefully that'll help you out if that was an issue that you've had or a cumbersome way of working in the past. Thank you for now, and we'll catch you next time.